This program is dedicated to those that paid for their lives at the hands of the state. Studios of WKTV. Let's go inside for Silent Voices. Hello and welcome to another edition of Silent Voices. I'm your host Dennis Lawrence. This is a show that the public can come on and tell their stories of abuse in the child welfare system and the family court system. Today we have a guest all the way from um, Kalkaska, Michigan. Kim, Kimberly Stevens is with us. Welcome to the show, Kim. Thank you. And before we get started, I've uh, heard very similar stories to yours. I talked to you on the phone, and I'm thinking, boy, I have to have you on the show because I, I got to do at least one show like this. I, I've been trying to get some others to come forward. Uh, and I guess it's a failure to protect uh, charge. Yes. So um, I want to show our audience some pictures of your uh, children as we get started here. Um, you know, they all look very happy. They were. I believe you had three of them. Am I correct? Yeah. They look, look like they came from a loving family. So tell me, Kim, how did CPS first become involved in your life? I had my daughter come to me and tell me that she thought that my then husband might have touched her personal parts, her privates. And um, when she told me she thought, I asked her what, and she said that she maybe had a bad dream. So I didn't know what to do, and I didn't go to the authorities right away. When she came to me the second time, I told him he needed to leave because he didn't, he's an he was an alcoholic. He didn't remember doing anything. She didn't remember exactly what had happened. She said that I had been tickling her feet or that he had been checking her pull up and so I was confused. I didn't know what to do. How, old, I, how old was she? She was, um, the first time she came to me, she was, I think, seven, eight. And the last time she was 11. And I took her anyway because he wouldn't stop drinking. And I wasn't going to have any more chances that it could have happened, you know, suspecting. And I took her to the police station and made a report. The day after I made the report, CPS and the police officer were sitting at the gas station across from our house. We had just got them playing at the park. And they pulled in our driveway right behind us to take the kids away. And um, the lady, the CPS worker, Paula Lipinski, handed me this paper. And uh, on the paper, it had the names, you know, the name of the perpetrator. It said that, um, the removal of the children because of this person do doing the molestation. And the name that she had was my older two children's biological father. It hadn't even been my ex-husband's name. His name was nowhere on this paperwork. The reason for, you know, that I had made the report about. And their biological dad, they hadn't even seen two years or more. So she had the names all wrong on there. And Judge Boudet signed it. And this is how they were going to remove my children. That's how they were going to take them, was with this paper that wasn't even, to me, legal. So, so the predator in this was the... It wasn't even named wasn't named but it, it was your husband at, at the, the time. time it was my husband yes um but when i what i did is when i went and filed the report i also kicked him out because i didn't know what was going to happen 
kicked him out. He was on his way to jail. I mean, I had done, made the report, no, no matter what, he was on his way to jail. So there, and I filed for divorce, too, the very next day, too. When they, when they took my kids, I went up and filed for divorce that day. I'm like, this is, you know, there's no chance for any reunification with him. I, I, I just, I filed for divorce, and if I couldn't have my kids, I didn't need So, it. So the police and the CPS worker came yep. out to your house, yep. gave you some papers. Yep. We have a judge sign. We're yep. taking these kids from you. Uh, they, did they ask where this man was? He was already in jail? No, nope, actually, I think he had been at work that night. He worked over in Traverse City, uh -huh. a, a pizzeria, and uh, he was at work when they came in and removed my children from me. Okay. And um, so he wasn't even anywhere around anyway. So, so they really didn't talk to him. Tell, oh, tell him he no. had to move. Or, no, they just took. No, they just took him. And but uh, he did file for a divorce. I filed for the divorce the very night, the day they took him. I went up to the courthouse and you know they took my kids. They pulled out the driveway and as soon as they they went down the road with my kids screaming for me, you know, I I went to the courthouse and got the divorce papers and filed. What was the sexual abuse? What type of allegation was? It was molestation. It was touching her privates. I mean, there was no. And that's the other thing that was really hard about it is I had no real proof. You know, when she, when she came to me, not, I, I would never call my daughter a liar. They'll call any uh -huh. kid a liar. They come to you. Now I know you go to the authorities or handle it in your own situation. Or handle it in your own way. If I would have known for sure it was going on, he wouldn't have been around. But so, I didn't know. It was suspected molestation. So uh, what happened to him? What, uh, did he got he... six months in county jail. And he's still on probation, if I'm not mistaken. Did he, uh, did he admit to this, sir? I got the DVD from the court that he admitted to it, that his attorney actually, is what I heard, told him that he had to plea in order to only get six months, or if he didn't admit to it, he would have gotten longer. He wasn't going to admit to it, and he would have gotten longer time if he wouldn't admitted to it. So On the DVD from the court uh, session that he, he did admit to, to the judge. So that, CPS uh, took your children and... When was your next court hearing? That when very you, next day, they the had a court. Day. Yep, the very next day after they and took my children. What was the plan issued? Did they give you a reunification plan? What was said at this hearing to you? At the hearing, there was no reunification plan. They said straight out that they were not going to have a reunification plan, that they had no parent agency agreement, that they were just terminating my rights for failure to protect because I had had prior CPS involvement. And what they meant by that was seven years, even eight years, I can't remember the time frame exactly, I had had CPS prior involvement because I had also initiated that too. I was seeking help for my son and um, he had behavioral issues. He is bipolar. He's got a whole bunch of things tied into one. He's got Asperger's syndrome. I had sought help for him with CMH and everything and they tried to say I didn't get the help that he needed and it was because CMH was turning me away and everything. I have all the paperwork and all the documents to prove that I took him there and I have all the assessment that they do when they first take your child in to do an assessment. I have all those. Well, if you uh, weren't given that child services and like that, why didn't CPS do something about that seven they, years ago? Why wait until this? Exactly. They never offered me any kind of services. And that's the other thing. They lied and said that they offered me services. I had never had services with them before. So, so here they go straight for the termination and yep. failure to protect. Yep. You, know, you know, there was another case in Michigan, and that was out of Midland, uh, Michigan. Kevin Cody and Stephen Pribonal. Pribonal, I heard them. And um, Stephen was actually murdered in the mm -hmm. adopted home. Well, Faith Baden was the mother. Uncle was molesting one of the boys, yeah. and she had turned that over to the police department. CPS took her kids because she and went them. for termination. And why is this happening? Why, why, why can you, how can you get a failure to protect when you don't know something's going on? I mean, this would be, this would be the last thing I would expect my better half to be doing. Exactly. Well, um... Do you uh, believe that CPS followed the procedure? No, I don't. I know that they didn't because if they did, they would have given me some kind of agency agreement or reunification plan. They would have let my children see me through the whole thing. They didn't even let my children see me or talk to me. Letters was the only thing we had going on. They would let, and I had to take them all the way to Traverse City to drop them off at Bethany Christian Services, the adoption agency that was in charge of everything. 
Oh, Bethany Christian was yep. in charge. I've, yep. I've heard that name around here before <laughs> somewhat. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> in fact, yes. I hear it quite often. Um, yeah. How did Bethany Christian treat you? Did you have any problems with them? Or? Nadine Baker was the case manager, or whatever she calls herself, for my children. And she was not only snooty and never smiles. I mean, I think, she, I don't know, personal opinion. But she was against me just like CPS from the beginning. She told the foster, in the foster home, I was told she would sit there and say what a bad parent I was before she even met me, before she ever interviewed me. She would say things about me to my children and in front of my children about how the, I wasn't going to get my children back. And this was before the court case was even done. I mean, she had her mind made up, you know, just like CPS did. I mean, CPS went so far as to adopt out my girls through the whole thing before the case was even over. They adopted out my girls, separating my girls from my son. So they separated <laughs> the three yeah. children? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They did. Um, in, that, in that period of time uh, with this adoption, uh, did, how long since the removal to the adoption did we have? Um, I believe it was probably two years, maybe not even. I mean, to the, uh, September 19th, 2007 is when they removed my children from me. And when I went to back to court, uh, I did my appeals um, with the appeal court and then the Michigan Supreme. It was in 2009 or early 2010. So it wasn't that long, not that long at all. And they had already been in at least two. My son has been in quite a few homes from what I've been told. Um, his behavioral nobody. Has your son, how old is your son now? He's 15 now. He's 15 in. He's special needs. He has not been adopted out? As far as I know, he has not. As, uh, as of two months ago, he had not been adopted out because I had asked the children's ombudsman, I don't know how to pronounce that, but, okay. I had asked them to return him. I said, you know, you let me keep my new daughter. Why not give me my son? Have you gone to the ombudsman with this? I have, and he told me to get over it because it would be confusing for my son to start a relationship with me at this point. <laughs> have you uh, had him look at your case or? He didn't, I don't think he did. I asked him to and he, he talked they, to me on the they phone. Ne they never issued a report. To no, you that. nothing. So it, nope. it was never an official thing. No. Buns the abundsman, by the way, cannot change anything. They can make recommendations. I doubt he even did that. And he didn't uh, sound like he was very helpful. Uh, <sighs> so, um, you were, wh when were your rights, I guess, to say, you know, Extra terminated? terminated? actually turned the day after Mother's Day of 2008 so October September 19th of September 2007, of 2007 mm -hmm. to, to uh, Mother's May. Day May of 2008 yeah so we got how many months about six about that about six months and generally speaking they give a year from removal to termination Not uh, to Pasco County and usually they do have a reunification plan unless it was something very terrible that the mother or the father right. had done. Well, well, certainly he was not the biological father of these nope. children, but nope. uh, your husband at the time. He was the biological of my youngest with him, but not the, my daughter that had been molested. Did you uh, ever appeal this case to yep. the higher courts? I appealed with the Michigan Court of Appeals, and they sided with me and reversed it and remanded it back to Kalkaska with a different judge because they found her biased, Judge Lynn Boudet, they found her bi to be biased in my case, which to me that would be the whole Kalkaska court, you know, they should have had everybody on that case different because if she's biased and everybody's working with her and for her, then everybody else should be changed. I mean, that's my opinion. but. Instead of doing anything about that, they totally went ahead, set the next court date, and it had Judge Boudet's signature on the pa next paper, too. Um, and like I said, they had gone ahead and even adopted out my girls. They went ahead and did the termination and everything. They went ahead before it even went, I mean, after the Court of Appeals, they ignored the Court of Appeals, re you know, retry everything, and, w and went to the Michigan Supreme Court. Michigan Supreme Court sided with Kalkaska, and that was done. I tried to get into the United States Supreme Court. Nobody told me. My attorneys didn't tell me about it. They said, oh, you have to have money, money, money. I tried. Nobody told me I could represent myself. But I got into the Supreme Court, the United States Supreme Court, and missed the deadline by one day because nobody told me I could represent myself. 
So that was the end. That they tell so me it's that over. Was basically, the end. They tell me it's over, but. How long has it been since you've seen your children? The day they took them. I, I heard their voices. They were screaming in the, the van at the adoption, Bethany Christian Services. They were screaming for me, and the van was rocking. When I went to drop off letters, that was the last time I heard their voices, and that was. Have you had any contact or any knowledge of whereabouts? I, I'm not supposed to know where they are, but I um. Attended, I uh, attended a basketball game for one of my, for my daughter, the one that had been molested. The adopted mother came across to me, and I sat on the opposing team, and she came across the way to me. It was in Man, it was two hours from my home in Manistee. She came over and she got in my face and told me I needed to leave. And I told her that I wasn't breaking any laws. I had already talked to an attorney, and you know my rights were terminated. The girls were adopted. There's nothing. Any, I wasn't breaking any laws. I was minding my own business. I wanted to see my daughter play her game. So. I, I was watching and stuff, and uh, when the girls walked through the door, I had actually screamed out, and I said, uh, Brandy, Felicity, you know, Mommy loves you, you know, and, you know, they changed my, my youngest, they changed her first name. It's not even her name, you know, so big deal, you know. That adopted mother, she, just, she had the coach come and tell me I needed to leave. I was disrupting the peace and disrupting the game, and I said, I'm not leaving unless the authorities remove me. Remove me. They went and got the authorities. So when the police officers came, I knew it was time to go, and I went. I told them, I said, well, you're here to tell me to leave. I'm going to leave. I said, but just so you know, I didn't start anything. I, I was here to see my daughter play her game. I got to see the game. <laughs> By the time it was all done and over, I got to see the game. Well, that's great. I, I, think <laughs> I got that's to see her play. And I think uh, people... I mean, mothers know where they're... You, you seek out where your kids are. You don't I think up. people need to do this more. If, need to follow up. On these children. You're not I mean, supposed to know, but you know. I'll tell you something. They can change their names, mm -hmm. their social security numbers. They can take the mother's and father's names off those birth certificates, but one thing they can't change is the DNA. Not those just that. Those are your children, and they will always be your children. Not just that. The fact that God is the one that gave them to us, not them. They, exactly they just right. want to play God. You know, and the other thing that gets me about the whole thing is, you know, they took him out of my home because, you know, my ex was an alcoholic. You know, he was never abusive, you know, until this stuff happened. And my daughters are in an alcoholic home. You know, what is going through my, my daughter's head? Is she afraid to go to this new mom if something was to happen? Is she, she would be afraid to tell her what was going on because of going with strangers again somewhere. You know, that, that bugs me. It just really bugs me. Well, we need to put more pressure on these adopted parents to let them know that many of these children were wanted <laughs> are wanted by the parents and were not abused. Well, she told me that I lost the fight, told me to give up. They were her children. I lost, and they were not mine. She said they were hers. She was very evil. Well, getting back to uh, this... Uh, Bethany Christian thing, um, you had some contact with Bethany Christian during during this ordeal. Yep. And what all evolved around that? I mean, if there wasn't no unification plan, why did they even talk to you? She, Nadine Baker, when she asked and called and asked if she could meet me at the Burger King in Caucasus, she said she needed to have some background history on me for when my children grew up and they wanted to find me. They wanted to know where they came from. They wanted to know their history, you know, their roots, so to speak. So she sat down and had a big old questionnaire. She's asking me, you know, my mother and father's name, where I was born, where they were born, you know, um, what happened to me as a child, you know, what, just a bunch of questions that was none of her business. But I mean, if this is the only way my children are gonna find me, of course I was willing to, to sit down and do it, you know, and it was, I don't know. Like I said, she was snooty. I haven't heard of that too much. Uh, in fact, we had That's a, why I said they had, their we had a adopted woman come to us. Um, yeah, this involved Bethany Christian out of Grand Rapids, and she wanted to know who her biological mother was. And um, Bethany Christian wanted to charge her $450 for the information. <laughs> so uh, I guess that's another tool for Fundraising Money. tool Money. for uh, Bethany. We uh, we got to be careful what we say because uh, 
one of our viewers of the show happens to be Bethany Christian Services. Oh, really? Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Give me my kids back. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> They'll get theirs in the end. God is has there, a big plan. Is there anything else that you like to go over uh, um, yet? You've had... I've got my new daughter that they let me keep. You know, she's 13 months old now, and if I'm, such, if I'm good enough to have her and to keep her and they don't think she's in any danger, they've even closed, closed the, the case with her, you know, then... Why, why can't they give back why, Exactly. Your... Why can't I have my other children back? You know, God bless me with them, not, not Bethany Christian Services, not Kalkaska CPS, not Kalkaska Courts, not Judge Lynn Boudet, you know, not Brian Beach or any of these other people that took them from me, you know, not all these... these players in this game they call you know whatever i don't know i i just well well in the state of michigan um if you had a prior termination that's reason to go to the hospital and take the following baby and they do it all the time and, and that's being done quite a bit yep. uh of course newborns don't remember so no, much and um So um, you do have another child. Are you, are you remarried? By the I'm way? remarried, yes. My, my daughter's with my new husband. I mean, it, that's our daughter. That's <laughs> your what daughter. I meant. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, congratulations. Thank I'm, you. I'm glad you got out of that um, mess that you were in prior. Um, can, can I, I'm, I was kind of, I had notes because I was so nervous to be here. And can I in, iterate, just one, put in one more piece of information? You can, you can reiterate a few okay. things if you would like. The day uh, they removed my kids, okay, and if I'm smiling or laughing or snickering, it's because it's so childish and immature that CPS would do this, okay? The lady, Paula Lipinski, that came to remove my kids, not only was the paperwork and the names all wrong on it, when I brought it to her attention that, I'm sorry, this isn't right, this information's not right, she took her clipboard and threw it in the back seat of her car okay, like an immature child, threw it in the back seat of her car and peeled out of my driveway, leaving this officer <laughs> in my driveway and by my house on my porch, okay, and he's like, okay, I can either take you to jail or I can take the kids. I'm here and I'm going to take somebody. He said, and if I take you, they're going to come right back and take your kids because they're unsupervised. Great, you know. So not only did I have to put my kids in this cop's car that they didn't know a stranger, I had to use my car seat because he didn't they have actually, a car seat. They actually put the kids in a police car? I had a police car, in yes, in the back seat of a police car. But they didn't have a car seat. I had to use my car seat for my little one and strap her in. And the whole time they're screaming, don't take us, take our daddy, you know, don't take us from our mommy. I could hear him going all the way down the road screaming for me, screaming bloody murder. The officer's like, you can get your car seat, come to the station and get it, you know, tomorrow or the next day or whatever. I had to use my car seat. I had to strap my babies in myself. You know, and they, and they expect this to be easy for parents. I mean, you know, and easy for the kids. My kids had to go in a stranger's car to a stranger's house to another stranger's house the next morning, you know, who, the pre-adopt home, whatever. And then to be around all these strangers, they had to go to a strange school with none of their familiar things, none of their belongings, none of their stuff, you know what I mean? None of their clothes, none of their friends, none of their families, no, nobody, not the people that loved them. What, how, how can yes, they do that to the kids? And this was in the school year, right? Yes, it was in September so, 19th. It was the beginning of the school year. They had my daughter. Well, all they had, of a sudden, here they're changing they're schools. They're shifting around. They, what? They're my afraid. Poor kids. They've never. I mean, the traumatic experience yes. on a child yep. going through this, especially well, your 11 year old. Yes. She just got molested. Yeah, exactly. By, what? By. Her daddy, her the dad. only daddy that she actually knew. And then she's going with these strangers. And what then she all thinking? of a sudden, boom, she's out of the house. She's got, she's had to be scared. And I wonder what that's going to create. Uh, she blames herself. I already know this because my parents actually went to a church camp where my, they got to see my daughters after they had, you know, been separated from my son. And uh, my daughter, the one that this had happened to, told my mother, make sure mommy knows I'm going to find her when I'm old enough and I love her. So she blames herself, she blames herself. and probably an imprint on society, not trusting government officials. 
<laughs> Can't blame her. A and we wonder what is wrong with the prison system and these children growing up. The state of Michigan, and as a matter of fact, the nation. <laughs> I'm sorry, I keep it. They, I keep it. <laughs> they wonder. They're they're claiming we're making children safe. We're keeping the children no, safe. No, they're not. And this is a falsehood. It is because children are not any better off in the system as they are at home with loving parents. People they know and trust. Now we have a, we <laughs> have a new DHS director now, more Corrigan. Yes, that's right. And seen the lot things of that I've heard about her, the the blogs that I've seen. She says she's going to fix the system, yeah. but I believe that she's trying to fix the system for the government, for the yeah. socialism that we're seeing in so this system. So she can keep system. her paycheck. This, ladies and gentlemen, this has got to be dealt with. That's why we're here, to bring out these stories of what are happening to our children and families across the state. There is more abuse and neglect that goes on in foster care in these adoption homes than there are in parents' homes. I would be afraid after hearing your story and after hearing very similar stories, I just got a call the other day from Port Huron. Same thing. A son was molested by a camp counselor. They got the parent for Failure to protect. She's going to trial in August. Faith Baden. There was another case out of Traverse City. Escanaba. Kent County. The same thing. Failure to protect. Because we call the police. Make because sure we anything. report this to the authorities. And we lose our children. What is wrong with this picture? I want to thank you for coming on today, You're welcome. Kimberly. Thank you for having me. And um, it was a hot day, a long drive for you. <laughs> and um, I want to thank you for sharing our story. This, this is uh, what is getting out to the nation, to the residents of Michigan, what is happening in the system. And we, we need to let others know what is happening happening to our families in the nation. I want to thank you viewers for watching this week. If you have any comments, suggestions, or if you would like to be a guest on the show, you can join me. Send me an email at miparentalrights at gmail.com. That's miparentalrights at gmail.com. We also have a social network. I'd like to see you all join because we have a lot of great things going to change the system. And that's at miparamorites.ning.com. That's miparamorites.ning.com. We'll be here next week with another story. So please join us next week for Silent Voices. Remember, your voice can make the difference.